Hello everyone and welcome back to another tactic video. So today is a short little one as I'm just going to really talk to you guys about how I build a tactic and things I do with that. Um, this is also going to be made in comparison to the set piece video which is coming out at the same time today. These are two little requests that I want to focus on just to get uh, these out of the way before my schedule changes to being Tuesday and Sunday for tactic videos. And I thought it'd be nice to give you guys a little glimpse into how I do this stuff for the new year as a nice little look into that. So if you guys are excited for it, uh, I know I am going to dive into my favorite team AC Milan and take a look at how uh, you work on things like adding individual instructions, uh, how I look to build, and just some ideas along those lines. I think that will be really, really useful for you guys. <laughs> So we are here with my favorite team, AC Milan, and um, kind of funny they're wearing a Tottenham jersey today, but uh, <laughs> just kind of how it goes. But So I want to quickly just talk about how I build, uh, just put together a tactic kind of quickly, and how I do roles like individual instructions and how that kind of gets put together, just so you guys can get a see of how it all works. So mainly one of the big things that I first like to do when I get to a team is I like to look at the roster and see who's on it. The first thing I will do is I will go through all the loan players, so everyone that's not at my club. I'll take them, and I will dump them into the U20s. <laughs> They're gone. Um, no longer in the team. I will then go and look around and go, okay, what positions do we have? So I have three goalkeepers. That's good. I have good depth there. I have one, two, three, four, five, six center backs. So that tells me I can play either a two, uh, either two center backs or three center backs because I feel I have adequate depth. I personally go with a twenty with a twenty five man roster rule when it comes to players. I think twenty five men is all you'll ever need in a season. Uh, that is, <clears throat> that is two full sets of elevens, and then three additional players. The three additional players are made up of a goalkeeper, a defender of some kind and a midfielder slash attacker of some kind and those are the three uh that you have normally i would normally say those two other players should be academy players though that are looking to gain um <clears throat> looking to gain like experience and to grow as players so that's generally kind of what i would look for but so i look at that and i go all right i have six guys here that are straight up center backs um all right sweet i do look see see i have some poor one here but I do also look and I go right backs. I have one, two out and out right backs. I have one guy here that can play either roles, but to me, he's nowhere near good enough and should be sent back down. So he won't count anymore. I look here and I'll go, all right, I have one left back. That's a problem. So I'll say I have one left back. Next thing I'll do is I'll go to my youth and I'll go to my under 20s. And I'll say, all right, what position do I need? I need a left back. So I'll keep going chugging down and looking around for players so um <clears throat> position left back so ballo Torre's out on loan the best player i think i can have in terms of a right back i mean sorry left back is probably bartesi and now obviously he's the one in bartesi bartesi he's really the one in real life so we'll take him we'll stick him into the first team I'm wondering what jimenez is rated i actually don't know off the top of my head nor do i see him but um so that's so that's good. Now we are covered in terms of that. So now we have a left back as well. So we're covered in those positions, which is good. Now he midfield. We have a lot of midfielders. We have some guys that can play DM. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six players that can play as DMs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That can play as center mids. And one, two, three, four that can play five. That can play as camp. So to me, that says we'll probably have a midfield three, and that can easily be made up of any of those positions there, which gives us a flexibility to adjust based off the other players. Now, what does that mean? Well, the other players, let's take a look. So the other players that we have are <clears throat> wingers. We have one, two, three players that can play on the right, one, two, three that can play on the left. Sorry, four, right, that can play on the left. <clears throat> excuse me, and we have two strikers. So that tells me we'll have a left winger and a right winger. We'll have a striker because we have two strikers. We'll have three players in the middle. So that immediately tells me 
that is we'll, we'll want to have three to four players in the middle. I think we want to have three so we can have two wingers. So we at that point we'll have to choose between what we want to do in the back. Do we want to have one of those midfielders not be included? Or do we want to have them included? Because we have enough players now to go with a two in the middle and three at the back, or two in the two center backs and three in the middle. We could go four in the middle, but I do think it would take away from some of the players we have here, as they can't play striker, and they look to be some of the best players we have. So if you look at ability, we go Manon is one of the best players we have, so he's got to play. Liao has to play, which means we need a winger, or he needs to play up top. Teo needs to play. Benasser and Giroud need to play. So these are all our best players. So that means we need at least one striker. We need a center mid, we need a left back, and we need a left wing or striker. If we now look at, say, a best player's Liao, well, he's really good as a as a winger. We'd probably want him out there. If we look at striker, probably not as good in my mind. I think you probably you get much more out of him if he's on the wing. You can utilize his flair a lot more. You don't worry about his decision and composure, which aren't that great. And I think his off the ball is going to be much more useful in that scenario there. The anticipation is good too, but... I think these probably suit his style of play much better. And if we look at inverted winger or inside forward, you can start to see kind of where the better stuff comes into play. So I think they're probably the best to look at. So I would say Liao is probably going to be a left. So you want to make sure he plays on the left. Ben Union at the goal in goal. Teo at left back. Ben Asser in one of the midfield roles. And Drew up top, which to me, if we go into this and we say create our own tactic, we'll just hit 4-3-3. We know now if we just pretend so we need to drew uh drew we need liao we need teo and we need benyon so now we'll look and we'll say what is his best role he's sweeper keeper on support teo is best at wing back on attack liao is best at being a winger on attack. Though in real life, I know he's not, so we're going to have him be an inverted winger on attack. I think this is his next best position. Inside forward uh, on attack, or support is his next best position, so we'll do that instead. Though I actually rather him have be on attack. And Giroud's best position is a target forward on support. So, we know that, and then we also need Ben Asser in here, and his best position is a deep-lying playmaker on defense. So, boom. That are the, those are the best players. Those are in their best possible roles, pretty much. And this is kind of what you'd want to build the tactic around. So in my mind, I go, I think we, in terms of our best players, if we look, go back to the squad, our next best kind of players are going to be a right winger, a center back, a center mid, another center back. So with that, you might want to consider playing three because some of your next best players are center backs. But also, what? How? That can't be right if I hit ability. How is Chow being, and Kalulu being linked above Tamori in terms of ability? That can't be any, that can't make any. Yeah, it says he's better than them. That's really funny to me. <laughs> I don't understand that. Tamori is probably one of the best center backs in the entire world. That's absurd. Um, but so in essence, you're, you're kind of looking at that and seeing those key players there. And to me, I just think you're going to be able to go with a three. So that's kind of what you're going to look to do. So then I'd look to see kind of like this. So I'd say um, pick, uh, where is it? Uh, mm. So this in essence is going to pick their best roles and duties. So I'm just saying, I'm just going to say here, when you go to the list, we're going to say the next best players. Polisic's probably the next best player to go on the right. We'll stick with this. And actually, you know what we can do here? We can go to tactics. We can go to pick the best possible XI, which is this setup here. And then what we can go is this. We can go to pick roles and duties, which will do for us there. Boom. So that will be the best roles for each of these players. Though I don't really understand why that's... These two are not flipped. There you go. That is just a better team anyway. Um, kind of odd. But so that kind of gives you an idea of like what the best roles are and what the best ideas are. Jesus, this is really defensive. 
for normal. If you look, I mean, there's a lot of control, but it's very defensive. So that kind of gives you an idea of at least what the team is and where they will want to sit in terms of their best roles and best positions. Um, from that, it's really good to then look and go, all right, what space do I want to create and where do I want to think? So you think about Liao, take a look at his, some of his best traits because being your best player. Knocks ball past opponents. Okay, cool. So you probably want him more isolated in space. And you probably also, he's really good. You know that on top of that also, he's a righty. So you probably want him cutting inside. So you're probably going to say, all right, inside forward on attack. One thing you might want to do there. Because you want him to be dribbling at people more, you might want him to then stay wider. Because if you have him stay wider, you're now going to be able to have him be able to run at people more, create little transitions. And just to let you guys know, one way you add individual instructions is you click on the player, you go to instructions, and you click this tab edit right here. This opens up the player instructions menu, and then you can select individual instructions like these, and then click OK. Now, when you don't have any team instructions set up, you can do things like adjust the press, adjust the passing directness, and things like that by clicking on the bars selected here. Whereas if you are playing, if you do set individual team instructions, you will be locked out of those things. So say we uh, say we set Liao to have a more often press, close down more. If we go here and say much more often, it says less often, but it's not. So we cannot have control over that anymore. We can't adjust the trigger press, but he will be closing down more because we've selected it here. So that's one thing you can do. You can also adjust it by clicking on this wheel to select which roles this does apply to and which roles this doesn't. So if that's the case, if we now turn him into an inverted winger on attack, the role will go away. But if we go back to inside forward, the role will reappear. So you can do adjustments like that, which can make a big difference. But one thing we we're saying is we want to create those scenarios. You go stay wider. Boom. He's going to stay wider. He'll have a better chance to be in the area here, get it, and then drive at players. So we can knock the ball past them and have the space to knock it past them. Teo, on the other hand, we look at him, we know he wants to get forwards, so he gets forward whenever possible, hits the ball with power, and runs with it often. So, because of that, we're going to say, alright, what's the things we want? Well, we want him to dribble more, because he wants to have the ball at his feet. We know one thing is that we want him to sit narrower when he attacks, because, and cut inside with ball, because we want Liao to be the one wider, the one that's trying to dribble at people. So we want to make sure that, even though Hernandez is going to get forwards, He's going to be in these areas attacking in kind of the 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 right the left center channel. And so Liao is still in the wide left channel where he can drive at people from there. So just things like that where you're thinking about where can I create space for players instead. Does that make sense? Like where can you create it where you have players going into certain spaces or doing certain things that don't interact and cause problems with each other. Like you might even say underlap left here for Teo. So that he's going to be sure to go into this 10 area here. And if that's the case, well, maybe you have um, Ruben Loftus-Cheek be a deep-lying playmaker. Because then he'll sit in these areas here and be more defensive, covering this area here with the doing that, while Teo goes beyond him and gets into those areas. And you say, all right, well, maybe you want to do that separately. And you also know, hey, you want Tamori to cover that. So he's best as a center back, we'll just say this, you know, all right, well, now I need to adjust the instructions so he goes wider to cover this space vacated by it. And maybe he's going to go wider, so Kyar can be very, just simply doesn't have to worry about that. You also can think Mignon, because you want him to help out in possession or whatever like that and be that extra thing. You ask him to play a little higher up, so he does that as well. Calabria, you don't want any, you don't want it all to be gone, but you want a little more support because of it so you can make him go a little higher up the pitch and add a little more to it and you can look see now the changes we made have added a lot more green to these areas in the middle now on top of that you say hey well now there's people attacking down the wing here there's people kind of covering in these areas and there's people in this area here well now i need someone in this area so now that's where you can go to this guy and go hey central midfielder on attack now he's going to attack into these areas so now you'll have it where you have someone here you'll have someone here like this when you're attacking which is great Tamori will slide over, you'll have Kiar there, you'll have a team looking more like this when you're attacking like this now. Something along these lines. Which you're like, cool, okay, but there's some gaps here and there. How do we adjust that now? So then you want to say, well, what can I, maybe I make him the playmaker here. Uh, maybe instead of that, he's a ball winner or something like that. 
So he's going to be more aggressive to help deal with kind of the issues around the middle of the pitch here. And it's things like that that you can just start looking to do and build small things along those lines where you can start piecing things like that together and creating kind of idea of a tactic. So it's something crazy like that. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy, but it's just starting to think about where spaces are, where stuff goes in terms of how you want to piece together. You want to find your key players, get them in the tactic first, find the roles that best suit them, and then start to build players all around those roles. Obviously, we're thinking deep length playmaker there. Well, that's where Ben Osser would probably play for us instead, where that's going to suit him the best. Or maybe we have him playing here as a deep length playmaker, sitting deeper, and we have this person here being a Carrillo, helping shuttle left and right, deal with things like this. So he's going this way and this way, helping deal with being more aggressive. Or you have them be a box-to-box, -box, someone that's going to shuttle up and down the pitch and get into these areas here, who will help out defensively, as well as help out with Ben Osser in these areas. And maybe you want Ben Osser to be higher up, so you have him on the support role. It just starts to turn into all these questions of where do you want things? Because look, now we have more control up here. So we see this stuff, there's more control up the pitch. If we go like this and we go now defensive, we look at this, there's not as much control up the pitch. So there's slight changes like that that can adjust things, or say if we wanted the Carrillo instead, Carrillero, it's not going to change too much, actually. But it just thinks the thing about it, just when you're constructing, it's like, where do you want people to go? You want Ben Osser to deal with these areas here in front of the defense. Tomori will drift wider to cover the player moving forward here. Calabria isn't going to go too far forward, so you don't have to worry about it as much. Kiara doesn't need to step wide. Karunic is going to be attacking in the middle here. Pulisic is going to go down the wing, so you have the right channel covered. The right central channel covered. The left central channel covered with Teo. The left, wide, the left channel covered by Liao. The central channel covered by Giroud. You have the left center channel with Loftus-Cheek underneath Teo. You have the right, you have the right center channel covered by Ben Osser as well, who can come forwards. So it's things like that where you think about where players are going to be, what players are going to do. You think about what shape's going to look like. I, I'm to, In my mind, I'm thinking the shape that I'm going to see when we attack is going to be looking something like this. Which is brilliant to me. Because look at all the control we have up here. Lots of it. And Tamori will probably be out there more. But there's a lot more control up here in these areas. And I see, alright, sweet. There's a lot of bodies, a lot of people in those spots. Maybe Calabria will even get up to here at times as well. Which is even better. So it's things that you see and you go, alright, we'll have all these people forward. Well, guess what? Now that means we want to play higher up too. So we can play a much higher line. So we can suffocate them. Because we're going to have so many bodies in those areas. So then on top of that, we should also counter and counter, we should look to counter press because we're going to be in those areas. We want to press really hard, press really high. We want to get stuck in and prevent the goalkeeper distribution so that we lose the ball, we'll foul instead of letting them run at us. And we want to force them to go long because there's so many bodies up there or they play into trouble. It's things like that where when you start thinking about the space and where you want people to go, it makes a big difference. Or you say here, you want us to play more narrow so that... We're even now where Leo has more room. You want you want to utilize the best, uh, utilize our players in terms of the passing through the middle. So because if we're playing now, we have this set up. Things like that where you just need to think about how you want to play, what you want to do. We're a better team, so we want to be more positive. Things like that all make a big difference. It's all about finding the finding the best spot for you in each of these. Sorry, I meant to say. Ah. But like here's players who would be the best in their roles at these in these spots. So if we just go pick roles and duties. Okay, cool. Look at all the control you have up there when the team is attacking in those areas. Look at all this control you'll have. So that's something you can think about and be considerate of. Of like, okay, this is the control we have, these are the stuff we have in this area. That's why you want to possess the ball up there. Okay, so instead you want to keep it. Keep it short. You want to not as high of a tempo. You want to work it into the box because you're going to have all those bodies there. It's things like that that you need to think about and consider when building a tactic that will go into making it more successful. Building around a team is the best way to do it because you'll always get the best out of the tactic. Building more generic ones, which I do sometimes, can be difficult because it doesn't mean the team will always work with it and can be causing some issues. But I would suggest get your key players in. So find your key players, find the guys that that are the ones you think are the most important in your team. Find your Liao's, find your Giroud's, find your Teo's, 
find your Mignons, and find your Benacers. And make sure that they are in the best roles. Do this. Put them in your tactic, in their best position, and come here and hit pick roles and duties. And do that. And see what happens. And then build from there. Find your next best player. Find a player you want another player you want to build around. Polisic is really important. He's going to be really good. Club captain, you want him in the team. Boom, now pick their roles and duties. Now you start to get a better idea of how you're going to have them play, what players are going to play what positions, and then you can start adjusting based off that. Well, Liao's really only going to get the best out of him as a winger, so how do we deal with him being a winger? How do we do this? So it's things like that you need to consider and think about to build these tactics and make them the best possible thing. Look at their traits too. Hugs the line, so you know Clavery is going to stay wider, so you want to give him a role like a wing back, where they're going to be going wider. Uh, doing this, you don't want to give him a fullback and have him say, have him say more than arrow. You don't want that because it's going to cause issues. See, it's going to be a problem, so it's going to be an issue with that. Look at Ben Asser. Uh, comes deep to get the ball, dwells on the ball, tries long arms, passes, likes to play ball to feet, dictates tempo. So you could say something like, likes long range passes, maybe give him more direct passes. Now it might conflict with dictate tempo, but he wants to play them. It's things like that that you need to look at and consider. Or let's see Polisic, like what does he want to do? Plays one too and plays his shots. So maybe encourage him to play shorter passes and to do things like that so that he then plays more one and twos. There's things like that, that you can incorporate as well. They even get more out of your players and make them even more efficient. So there's all these things to look at and consider, and they make a really big difference, and they lead to a lot of uh, a lot of improvement with the team, and I really suggest looking into those and making a big one. Now, the other thing I do suggest doing when it comes to attack, which is the final thing, is if you can get to the comparison screen, do get to this screen. It will be very, very helpful in terms of figuring out things that will make a difference for you in the long run in terms of what you're good at, what you're bad at, so you also have a better idea of an attack. We're really good at anticipation, but are we quick? No, we're slow, so we don't want to be dribbling. We don't want to be running as much. We're good at finishing, and we're bad at long shots, so we want to work the ball into the box. We're all we're decent at heading, so we can get the ball in the air. We're we're decent at jumping, and we can put the ball in the air. It's things like that that you want to consider off the moment. We're good off the ball, so you can pass around. It's all these things you want to look at and consider because they make a big difference. And I really do suggest seeing that because it'll help you a lot when it comes to making the tactic. So hope you guys did enjoy that little bit on how I do stuff as well as how you do the individual instructions as well. Just once again, a final time for the end. The way you do individual instructions are you go to a player, you click the edit button, and then you select the individual instructions that you do want. If you have uh, preset stuff on your team's tactical style already and things like this, you will be locked out of certain roles. If you set a passing directness, you can't adjust the passing directness. If you set a pressing intensity, you cannot adjust the pressing intensity anymore. Things to keep aware of, but also the fact that if you do choose certain roles, um, like a winner on an attack, you'll be forced into selecting certain things, like uh, get for the road and stay wider. So things to consider, but still all very, very useful. That is all for how to make tactics and things that I wanted to do with that. Hope you guys did enjoy. Well, guys, I hope that was helpful. Obviously, it is a bit of a shorter one, just kind of explaining a few little things with the team, what I look to do for in terms of setting stuff up, in terms of players' positions and things like that, in terms of roles, and just looking for complementary roles and looking for space and how you cover space. Um, it's nothing too crazy. Obviously, the, uh, the further instructions come down to you and how you want to set up your team. But that just kind of gives you a rough idea of how I start the idea of a tactic when it comes to a team, and then how I further execute it based off a lot of other different roles and attributes and ideas. That's obviously the further down the line. But just kind of the basic idea of how you set up the team, the possessions, and those instructions like that. So um, thank you again, guys, for watching. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe. And be sure to follow along as we have some more tactic videos coming. Obviously, Tuesday, Sunday is the new schedule for them. And I think this weekend's one is going to be a real, real interesting one with Luke Williams' tactic being the big one to come out. His style at Knott's now being translated to Swansea, where he's apparently going to be moving. And I think it's going to be a good one. I'm, I'm excited to see how it works. I'm excited to see how it all goes down at Swansea. And I'm excited to show you guys. So be sure to tune in for that one on Sunday. And I'll hopefully catch you guys in that. Surprise. 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 Surprise.